If you collect more than 50 million old tires, you're gonna be confronted with a pile like this. You could see a lot of giant structures from space, and you could also see this tire graveyard from space. These square holes you're seeing in the ground, they are not the same height as the ground. They are giant ditches and the tires are piled so high that they go above ground. What you're seeing is the biggest tire graveyard in the world and it's located in Kuwait. If you didn't know, the Kuwaiti dinar is the most valuable money on earth and each dinar is worth about $3.20. Kuwait is a country that has a lot of oil and it has a low population. That is why the income per capita is extremely high. Four and a half million people live in Kuwait, but only 40% of them are citizens. More than three million people in the population are just workers that work there part time and they mostly come from different points in Asia. The way you can get citizenships in Kuwait you have to live there for more than 20 years. Be a Muslim, they might give you a chance at being a citizen. We said all this to ask this question, why does a rich country like Kuwait have all these used tires laying around? How many cars drive in this country for it to pile this much? One of the leaders in Kuwait decided to collect used tires from the area. They chose an abandoned location in the desert, contact neighboring country, and ask them to give them their used tires. They collect the area's used tires for more than 20 years, and it adds up to more than 50 million tires. But it seems like the leader didn't really have a plan for it because they left these used tires and kept adding on to them. From the year 2012, this huge tire pile caught fire three times, and it was mostly because of the heat. If you didn't know, when a tire catches fire, it's extremely dirty, and putting it out is much harder than it looks. You guys have probably seen oil wells catch on fire, and it has black smoke similar to tire smoke. But when oil is burning, it's pure oil, but when you're burning tire, there are tens of chemicals in this tire. Chemicals that slows down aging, adds traction, and it helps the tire to have an overall better quality. These are all dangerous chemicals and when it catches on fire, they're all burning. When the fire happened, you could see it with a satellite. This wasn't the first time a giant tire pile caught on fire in the world, and it's very common. Like for example, in February 1990, a tire graveyard in Canada caught on fire that caused the biggest fire in that area, and it lasted for 17 days straight. The fires caused so much pollution in the area that they were forced to move more than 4,000 people from that area to the next city so they don't suffocate from the pollution. After the fires took place in Kuwait, the neighboring countries started complaining and they asked the Kuwaiti government why they are keeping all these tires in this area and why don't they recycle them. After the complaints, the Kuwaiti government had no choice but to invest money to create facilities to recycle these tires. After these facilities were built, they pretty much cleaned up this field in a few months. And right here, you could see the before and after. So right here we want to ask, how did they actually recycle these tires? There are three main ingredients in these tires. First, you have rubber, carbon black, and metal wires. There are plenty of chemicals that are mixed into all these. They first compact the tires so it takes less space, then they put it in the kiln. This furnace gets hotter as a 450 degrees centigrade. When the tire starts to burn, it turns into black smoke and all the rubber and chemicals is in that smoke. This machine collects all that smoke and dust and cools it down. And this carbon powder that you receive could be used in plenty of applications like biofuel. When the tire turns into smoke and it's all collected, what's left is the metal wire. 
they cool down the wire and pull them out. You could very easily recycle these metal wires. This system was one of the more modern systems of recycling tires. On the other hand, there are plenty of other ways to recycle it. Like one thing they do is that they turn the tires into powders and turn them into floor tiles. Not really tiles, but like a carpet style that goes into a mechanic shop or a garage. Another way they recycle tires is that they take the powder that comes from the rubber of the tire and mix it with asphalt. In this case, you get an asphalt that's much quieter when you drive on it. But let's visit another graveyard. Do you see this place? What do you think it is? Are there flowers or wheat? No, it's none of those things. This is a graveyard for bicycles. In the year 2014, China decided to put bicycles all over the cities and charge a little bit of money when you use them. In a short period of time, all over China, the Chinese put 16 million bicycles all over the country. After six months, they realized that they produced too many bicycles. And in the most crowded times, less than 10% of these bikes are being used. For this project, they built so many bicycles that they didn't even have a place to park it. Like for example, in a city like Beijing, they could organize about 1.2 million bicycles without ruining the look of the city. But it got weird because in Beijing, there was two and a half million bikes alone in this city. This is when the government was forced to create a new graveyard in this country a graveyard for bicycles. The difference between the graveyards for bicycles in China and the entire graveyard in Kuwait is that in China, it's located in many different locations. And in each graveyard, there's about 50 to 200,000 bicycles. They don't know the exact number of bicycles that located in these graveyards but they estimate it's more than 5 million and they keep adding onto them day by day. In the end, let's look at another interesting graveyard. This place is not meant for tires or bicycles, but it's meant for humans. This place is called the An Bang Cemetery in Hue, Vietnam. One of the weirdest thing about this place is that it's located in a very rural area that people don't make a lot of money in, but an average price for a grave here is about $70,000. Before we move on, you have to know that in Vietnam, an average income for an average employee is $150 a month. So how do they afford a grave like this? Vietnam's culture is much different than you think because they have to spend a lot of money on a person they love that died. When a Vietnamese person passes away, usually their family and friends put their money together for them to have a proper and beautiful funeral, plus the grave. This is in a way where they might not even have a house. They don't help put money together to buy their friend a house, but they will buy him a grave. It is not clear who owns this place, but they say the Vietnamese government owns it. And this is the entrance of the graveyard, which is a work of art. You could also find these works of art inside the place. And since it's an open area, Tourists can enter this place and take a look for themselves. Everybody is familiar with different types of transportations, like trains, buses, and of course cars. But these vehicles, especially the ones that go on the road, would be nothing without asphalt. Asphalt is something very simple. It's basically stones, sand, and bitumen mixed together and laid on a flat surface. Of course, one of the most important parts of it is the bitumen. Nowadays, bitumen is gotten from oil, but back in the day, they didn't know they could extract bitumen from oil. So how did they get it? It's not only oil that carries it. You could actually naturally find bitumen that looks like this, like a form of black rock. 
and if you heat it up, it will turn into a black gooey liquid. It's interesting to note the first time bitumen was used and it was written about in history was the Sumerians lining their boats with bitumen so it does not leak water inside. You can also find ancient structures that were made in modern day Iraq and they're lined with bitumen so water would not get inside. In ancient Persia, the bitumen was called moom. And it's interesting to know that one of the materials the ancient Egyptians used to mummify a body was bitumen. And that's where the term mummy comes from because moom was the name for bitumen and mummy comes from that word. Ancient Romans would get their bitumen from around the Black Sea. Maybe that's the reason the sea is called black because there was these black rocks near it. But it's interesting to know that the Romans had a different name for the Black Sea. They would call it Paulus Asphaltids and that's where the term asphalt comes from. Throughout history, bitumen was only used to stop leaking, mainly for a roof of a building. But that's until we get to the 19th century, when the British and the French start using a lot of bitumen on all of their buildings because they realize it's the best material to stop leaks inside a building especially houses. This causes a whole lot of bitumen to be used and since there isn't a lot of it in the natural world, the prices start to rise. On the other side of the pond, the United States is not using bitumen to stop leaks whatsoever. They're looking for new ideas, an idea on how to make roads more smooth. The Americans wanted their roads to be so smooth, especially in New York City and Washington DC, that they were considering bringing granite to make the roads smoother. But you have to know, at this time, there is no cars. There are only bicycles and chariots with horses, but they still wanted to smooth out the road. The want for smooth roads made a lot of engineers and scientists to figure out a new way on how to smooth out roads. Eventually in the year 1876, the first asphalt road is built. And what they did is basically created the first ever type of asphalt mix bitumen with gravel and the first road that asphalt was laid was Pennsylvania Avenue Washington DC. It was an extremely important invention especially for the Americans because it was the 100th year anniversary of the American independence and it was a very special time. Just like we said the first ever road was created before cars were even invented so this smooth road was made for chariots and bicycles. We move forward and we get to the year 1900. At this time, most American roads in the cities, especially New York City, Washington DC, and other cities like Philadelphia have asphalt roads. But still, more than 99% of the American roads are not paved, they're dirt roads. And the reason was that is there was not a whole lot of bitumen available to mix it with gravel and make roads all over the country. We are at a time where asphalt is extremely important and not in the United States anymore, all over the world because the automobile has been invented and it's slowly taking over. When you're faced with a situation like this, especially scientists and engineers tried to find a new way on how to solve the problem and one of the problems was how to create a whole lot of asphalt that doesn't cost a whole lot of money. At this time, oil had already been discovered and it was being used especially as kerosene and Rockefeller has become one of the richest men in history because of it. But they still hadn't realized that you could grab this type of bitumen from the oil and eventually they realized how to pull the bitumen out of crude oil and the problem was now solved. It was really black gold because after this technology was discovered, Roadways became a whole lot easier and simpler to build. And of course, Henry Ford has made the automobile in a way that everyone is able to afford one. So the roads are needed more than ever. It was after this that the first freeways were created. Another interesting fact is that freeways didn't really hit Europe until after World War II. Hitler also said that we need to make German roads like American roads because at this time Germany did not have any highways. It was basically after World War II that asphalt truly took over the world. Anywhere a road was being built, asphalt was involved and it wasn't dirt road anymore. The first generation asphalts were terrible compared to what we have now because they would get cracked and they wouldn't last as long. The technology was moving forward and not only in the asphalt industry, 
But in the heavy equipment and machinery, this is when you're seeing semi trucks on the road that are much heavier than before. So when you have more weight moving on top of this asphalt, it's going to get damaged. This is when they created more durable asphalt so it wouldn't crack as easy. It's also in the 1960s where a lot of American highways, especially the ones that have a lot of traffic, are created with concrete. These concrete roads remain to this day because they're much more durable than asphalt. But it's much more expensive and worst of all, it takes a whole lot of time for this to cure. If you're working on a road and you're using concrete, you have to keep the roads closed for a longer period of time until it's able to be driven on. Working with asphalt is much easier than concrete because all you have to do is heat it up and it gets soft and you can move it around. But with concrete, it gets hard and it's hard forever. Cold is not good for asphalt either. It makes it extremely hard and that makes it brittle. That's why roads get destroyed in the winter much more common than summer. But too hot doesn't help either because when the road gets extremely hot in the summer, it gets very soft. And when a semi truck all of a sudden slams on its brakes, it's going to roll the asphalt forward, creating bumps. This is another reason there's weight limits on the highways and you can't get too heavy because if you're above a limit, you're going to destroy the roads just by driving on it. It didn't take long for the engineers to realize that one of the most important things about laying asphalt is its foundation. It has to be smooth and if it's not, the asphalt will crack and fall apart. Also another important factor is that you have to eliminate every single crack. If cracks remain on the asphalt, water will slowly seep in there and wash the underneath the asphalt. And when it washes out, it creates an empty spot. And if a car drives over it, it will create a pothole. But the technology used for asphalts have not stopped. One of the newest technology used in modern asphalt is that recycled tires get burned into powder. And that powder is mixed with the asphalt. This causes the asphalt to get much more smoother. This causes a lot less noise when cars drive on top of it. And it also causes less friction on tires. Asphalt like this is very new and you could find it near highways next to nice neighborhoods. But hopefully all modern roads will be paved with this type of asphalt. Another thing that makes asphalt special is that it's 100% recyclable and it's not that hard to do so. Concrete is also recyclable but it's very expensive and it's harder to do so. Recycling asphalt will take only one vehicle. It literally shaves the asphalt off the ground. It will take it inside its kiln and heat it up. It will add some butumen if it's needed and then lay it back down. That's how simple it is. So when you drive on a road like this, don't think that it's a simple road. It took years and years of engineering and scientists working on this idea to make it possible. 